Brief Introduction to Current Transformer and Its Applications In Part 4, we talked about the techniques involved in sizing a current transformer for protection and metering applications, and how it can be used to mitigate saturation. In Part 5, we will build upon the previous discussion and talk about the concept of CT saturation, including a brief overview of the various parameters involved. If this video was helpful for you, please consider subscribing to generalpack.com. Our goal is to make power systems intuitive. Our corporate sponsor for this topic is Illumiax.com, from Seattle, Washington. Contact them for industrial and commercial power system studies like short circuit, coordination, and arc flash studies. Illumiax.com also performs advanced studies like power quality, motor starting, grounding grid, reliability, transient stability, and snubber circuit studies. Visit Illumiax.com for these power system studies. Let us start by first establishing the basic concept of saturation. We shall now revisit the equivalent circuit from the previous parts. As we start increasing the primary current IP, which flows through the primary winding, it generates a magnetic flux in the transformer core. Assuming that the secondary terminal is connected to a load or a burden, this magnetic flux induces a secondary voltage Vs, the secondary current Is, begins to flow, in the secondary circuit. This secondary current Is, induces its own flux, in the secondary winding, which acts in the opposite direction to the flux, present in the primary winding. These two fluxes, try to cancel each other out, and this process continues, until the CT reaches saturation. To put it, in more simple terms, the CT can no longer produce magnetic flux to account for the increase in the primary current IP. A reference to the content can be found in the article Beyond the Knee Point, a practical guide to CT saturation by Schweitzer Engineering Laboratories. Coming back to the discussion, the reason why this happens is because, within the iron core of the current transformer, there are a limited number of magnets available to produce the desired magnetic flux. As the primary current increases, more and more available magnets start to line up with the magnetic field. And once all of them have been lined up, that is the point at which the CT becomes saturated. The resulting issue comes from the fact that the CT can no longer accurately transform the primary current. In order to understand more about the effects of CT saturations, let us consider a typical excitation graph. On the x-axis, we have the excitation current, i.e., and, on the y-axis, we have the secondary terminal voltage Vs. An important parameter to consider is the knee point voltage. We can define this as the voltage beyond which a 10% increase in the secondary voltage will cause the excitation current to increase by 50%. We can recall from our discussion in previous parts, the greater the excitation current, the lower the accuracy of the output secondary current. We want the excitation current to be as low as possible, and it is exactly why the normal CT operating point should remain below the knee point voltage. Keep in mind that the point of saturation is not the same as the knee point voltage. The point of saturation does occur after exceeding the knee point voltage, however, it is defined as the point where the CT error starts to exceed the 10% accuracy limit. In conclusion, knowledge of CT saturation is critical for power systems protection. Other parameters and mitigation techniques will be discussed in more detail in a dedicated topic for CT saturation. The examples used in this tutorial are derived from SEL's article, Beyond the Knee Point, a practical guide to CT saturation. Rest assured, these are good and accurate examples. If mistakes are found, they will be described in detail on generalpack.com. In part 6, we shall talk about the importance of understanding the concept of CT polarity. We hope you have a continued interest in this topic and series as a student or professional. We also hope you find this content useful and enlightening. Please consider subscribing to generalpack.com. Making power systems intuitive.